Simplicity has recently released some of their new McCall patterns for early spring. So we're gonna take a look at the patterns included in this release. Starting with M8449, which is a Mrs. Dress, dresses and sash. So this is a pullover dress that has a placket, collar, sleeve, and length variations. And view C has front buttons on the placket and there appears to be a separate sash that comes with the dress. So this is view A, which doesn't have the button plackets. You can see the sleeve length here, looks to be a little bit of a drop shoulder, some beautiful gathers in the front, gathers in the back with a back yoke. View B shows it with a sash on as well as sleeves. And then view C shows it with a different sleeve length with button plackets. And there is an optional sash as well. There looks to be some pockets here. I feel like this description was kind of skimpy in terms of what's actually going on. So this is what it looks like, but let's see if we can get a closer view here. Okay, so it looks like this version is version C, view C with a stand-up collar, beautiful gathers, button plackets. This collar and placket looks a bit wobbly, but this is what the sash looks like. And I'm noticing in the back, there looks to be a carrier loop here to hold the sash in place, but this is what it looks like. And it looks like the length of this dress is mid calf length. I will say that this fabric that they used, it's very striking and it looks beautiful. I love this fabric. This is an illustration of a different view with a different type of collar. Placket does not have the buttons that are visible, a different sleeve length, and this looks to be like the shorter version here. And this might be view B. Collar, glathers, placket, sleeve, sash. Okay. This looks to be the same picture we just saw. Just, yeah. Let's see if we have any other pictures. Okay, yeah. So this is the back view with the yoke, the back gathers. It looks to have some carrier loops here on the side to help hold the sash in place, which is a nice touch because without it, if you were to take the sash off, there wouldn't be anything to keep it attached to the garment. So I appreciate that there is some carrier loops included. And yeah, I mean, it looks to be a nice looking dress. So the suggested fabrics for this is chalice, cotton blend, linen, and poplin with some interfacing, which makes sense for the collar and the placket. Um, there are some buttons for view B and C for notions. This pattern goes up to a size 26 with a body measurement for size 26, the bust being 48 inches. So the finished garment measurement for size 26 and the bust is 60 and a half inches. That's like what 12 and a half inches in the bust and then the waist 41 inches for a size 26 and the finished garment measurement for the waist is 62 and a half inches. Oh my goodness. That's like what 21 and a half inches in the waist. This is going to be a, a loose fitting dress. At first I was just like, this is gonna be really cute. And you can see in the line drawing that this is not gonna be a fitted dress, but I was not expecting 21 and a half inches to be swimming around one's waist. No wonder they included the sash. This is M8456, which is a Mrs. Women's Knit Top Shorts and Pants. There is an easy to sew sleeveless or long sleeve knit top that has a fold over turtleneck and pairs with either a pull on knit shorts, culottes, or pants with a wide waistband. There are some seaming details as well as some optional front pockets. So this is the sleeveless knit top with the fold over turtleneck as well with the sleeves for view B. There is knit shorts with some seaming details on it. There is culottes for view D and pants for view E. But let's take a closer look at it. See if we can get a closer look at the model photos. 
sleeveless fold over turtleneck okay this reminds me of a previous design i think by nomi patterns where there was a cargo pants that had pockets in the front no it wasn't nomi patterns it was a simplicity pattern that had pack pockets on the front of the leg it had pockets down on the ankles. It was such a wild pattern. And it looks like this is taking some inspiration from that pattern. Why would one put front pockets on their, their thigh? I, I really can't tell you. But I'm going to skip through these illustrations. Oh, that's it. That's the only model photo that we get. We just get this one model photo wearing the culotte. So we do not see what the shorts look like on the model, nor do we see what the long pants look like. Let's take a look at the back of the envelope here. So this uses stretch knits, such as cotton knits, French terry, sweatshirt fleece. There are notions for an elastic. This is both a misses and women's pattern. So the misses sizes will go up to a size 18 and the women's sizes will go up to a 38W. What I am happy about for this pattern is you get the full size range in a single pattern. This is M8455, which is a Mrs. Knit Top and Leggings. So this is a cropped knit top with short or long sleeves and leggings in two lengths with some seaming details and some optional color blocking with view D leggings having a front leg slit. So this is the crop top and it looks to have a half sleeve and similar crop top with a long sleeves and it looks like the wrist band has a thumb detail where you can pop your thumb out it looks like. Here is the leggings with some color blocking opportunities and similar leggings however view D has the front slit. So this looks to be the crop top with the half sleeves on it. These sleeves look kind of loose and it's twisting. So there might be something going on with the sleeves here. Yeah, not quite fan of the elastic here of the application of the elastic for the crop top either. And this is what the pants look like. Mm, I'm not a fan of how these pockets look either, but you can see the seaming details and you can see the front slit here. Let's see if we can get a closer look. Okay, we're not going to be able to get a closer look at the leggings, but at least for the top here. Yeah, just similar. Just there's something not quite right with the sleeves. But it does show the leggings, the seaming details and the front slit. I'm skipping through the illustrations intentionally. Okay, so this is the back view. Yep, not a fan of the elastic application. But all of the things that I'm pointing out in terms of like the sleeve or the elastic application, those are things that can be fixed. This is the leggings in the back with the seaming detail and the front slit. I am just not someone like who is a fan of pants with the front slit. I know they're really popular, but if you're like me and you're not a fan of front slit, thankfully they already include a view without it. So you don't have to make any sort of adjustments. So the suggested fabric for this pattern are knits, athletic knits, four way knits. There are some notions with the elastic and this goes up to an XXL, which is a size 24 to 26. If you are in the size 24 to 26 size range with a bust between 46 and 48 inches, the finished garment measurement is 48 inches. There could be up to two inches of positive ease in the crop top. And then the hip for a size 24 to 26 size range is 48 to 50 inches. The finished garment measurement is 51 and a half inches. So that's three and a half inches of positive ease. If you want a crop top and leggings to be fitted, you don't really want positive ease you actually want zero ease or negative ease 
this may be another pattern where you have to go down a size to get the right fit. The next pattern is M8457, which is a Mrs. Loose Fit Jumpsuit and Sash. Okay, another pattern with a sash. So this is a easy to sew jumpsuit in size small to XXL. The jumpsuit has front buttons, sleeve variations, and side pockets, and you can wear it with or without the sash. This is what the jumpsuit is giving. I feel like there could have been more words could have been used to describe this pattern. But this jumpsuit, you can make it just with straps. You can have some sleeves or you can just do it sleeveless. There does look to be a front button placket and perhaps carrier loops on the side, pockets. I wasn't quite sure if I was seeing a zipper or not. I guess I'm not seeing a zipper. But let's take a closer look at this pattern. Oh gosh. Simplicity. Why are you making stuff out of black fabric? Like, why are you making samples out of black fabric? I guess this is this is view B with a V-neck sleeve variations. There looks to be a button placket, but you can barely see it. There's also a sash being worn here, but again, it blends into the fabric, so you can barely see it. And yeah, let's see if we can get. Hopefully, this is made out of a different material. This looks to be like the same picture. Although you can do, you do see the bust gathers here. Are we gonna get this in a different color? That's not an illustration. This is the back. I don't see the carrier loops on this. And they probably could have done something a little bit different with the print. Oh no, that's it. Why is, why is simplicity being super stingy with the model photos? Either there is no model photos or when you do get a model photo, it's like one or two. And in this case, the two photos that we get is made out of black fabric. So you really can't see what's going on. All right. Uh, suggested fabric is cotton blends, cotton lawn, gauze, and silkies. Is it, <laughs> what the heck does silkies mean? Is that like another way to say polyester? Silkies. Just say silk fabric or just say polyester. Like what is silkies? Anyways, there's interfacing for the button placket. Uh, there are some buttons and some bias tape for the notions. So this goes up to a size 24 to 26 size range. And if you're in that size range for the bust, it is 46 to 48 inches. So the finished bust measurement is 77 inches. Wait, 77 inches? That is 31 inches in the bust? I know they said in the, the description of the pattern that this is loose fitting, but 31 inches swimming around your bust? Stop it. Stop it. Simplicity. Stop it. This is out of pocket. What is the waist looking like? So 39 to 41 and a half inches. So then the waist finish measurement is 69 inches. So that's 30 inches of ease in the waist. I'm sorry, even with a sash, a sash is not going to be able to rein in 30 inches of fabric swimming around your waist. That's Wow. Okay. What are the hips? 48 to 50 inches. Finished garment measurement for the hips is 67 and a half inches. There's going to be 19 and a half inches in the hips for ease. So you have 31 inches in the bust. You have 30 inches in the waist and 19 and a half inches in the hips. What? What? I can't go too hard on this because they did say it's a loose fitting jumpsuit. So they weren't lying about that, but that's a lot of ease. Okay, this is M8459, which is a men's shirt. So this is a fitted bowling shirt that has a notch collar, short sleeves with a sleeve band, front button closing, and there's some opportunity to use contrasting fabrics here. So bowling shirt, notch collar, buttons, bands on the sleeves. It looks like it gets tapered in on the hip area. View B and view C looks to have like a band going around the hip area. All right, it's a, it's a bowling shirt. Let's take a closer look at it. 
Hmm. I'm a little bit distracted by the fabric choice being used here <laughs> in this sample. Not because there's anything wrong with it, but like I'm trying to see the details of it. And instead of being able to see the details of it, I just see the fabric, you know, beautiful fabric, but it's distracting. Um, <laughs> but anyways, there is a notch collar, front button placket, bands on the side. It does taper in on the hip area and there looks to be like a kind of a hip band, if you will, on the bottom. Let's see. Uh, is this the same look? Yeah, it's the same look, but just a little bit closer. Oh, yeah. Illustrations. All right, the back is going to be absolutely plain. There is not going to be a single design element in sight on the back. Let's see the back of the pattern envelope. So the suggested fabric is chalice, cotton blends, lawn, and silkies, again with the silkies, uh, interfacing, and there are some buttons for the notion. This goes up to a size 52. So if you're a size 52, the chest measurement is 52 inches and the finished garment measurement is 56 inches. So that's four inches of ease. And then for the waist for a size 52 is 48 inches. The finished waist measurement here is four and a half inches. Okay, so this is going to be a fitted men's shirt. I think there is some nice opportunities here. Overall, I think this is a very nice men's shirt. The next pattern is M8452, which is a misses skirt and two lengths. So this is a cargo style pull on skirt with length, hemline and pocket variations. Skirt view A has a bubble hem and view B has an elastic cord at the hemline. So this is view A, elastic waist with the bubble hem. And view B and view C is when you get all of the cargo goodness from two side pockets, one with a zipper and drawstring at the bottom. And view C has front pockets with no drawstring on the bottom. Okay, so let's see if we can actually take a closer look at this. I think of these views, view A and view C look the most interesting, but we have view B here. So you get the drawstring waist, you get the side cargo pockets and the drawstring at the bottom. I mean, I think view A, which is, this is what it is. I think this view is the one that you can probably get the most wear out of because of just how simple it looks. And with the bubble hem, I think this is like actually a cute one. This as well, even if you're not a fan of pockets, you don't have to add these pockets here and you can just stick with the front pocket. Uh, this is the back of view B, which is not much going on in the back. So suggested fabrics is Dupani or Dupiani. Dupioni. I don't even know how to say this word and yet I see it all the time. Dupioni. Dupiani or Dupani. Dupioni. There's two eyes in it and I'm not quite sure if I should gloss over the first eye or not. Let, let me know in the comments down below how to say this fabric name. Dupioni. Um, lightweight nylon ripstop and taffeta. There is a lining included as well as interfacing and the notions include elastic, drawstring cord, snaps, zippers, and cord stoppers. This goes up to a size 22 and it looks like it only gives the hip measurement. So if you are a size 22 with a 46 inch hip, the finish hip measurement is 77 and a half inches. So that's 31 and a half inches in the hips. I, I would have expected the width at the hem to be like 77 or even 80 something inches, mainly because there's a drawstring at the bottom and it's a bubble hem, but to have your hip measurement be like 31 and a half inches of ease, which is not the hem, that seems like a lot. The hem must be like, I don't know, probably in the 90s. It must be 90 inches plus in the hem. So this is going to be a big old skirt. The next pattern is M8465, which is a Mrs. Dress, Tunic, Pants, and Panties. Okay, quite, quite the pattern here we got going on. Um, so this is a 1970s 
dress tunic and pants sewing pattern. It has the dress and tunic has a back zipper with puff sleeves and it has a two piece button trimmed collar. Short sleeves have elastic in the casing. Long sleeves have elastic in the upper and lower casing. Okay, so it sounds like the sleeves, there's a lot going on with those sleeves. Pants have elastic in casing and this is an authentic vintage reproduction and it includes additional sizes and cutting layouts. This is the tunic, the dress and the tunic here. So we only get the back view. From the back view, you can see their shoulder darts, collar, back slippers, puff sleeves with additional casing around it. And then you can see very similar for view B. However, there are two casings, one on the upper arm and one around the wrist. There are some pants and there is some shorts. I feel like such a creeper saying panties over and over again. So, all right. So this is, <laughs> this is the color detail with the button, which is kind of cute. View A is the dress and it looks like the dress has princess seams, puff sleeves, casing. The tunic has two casings in it, one on the upper arm here. This is just more illustrations and blurry illustrations. Okay. Are we going to see this on a model? No, we're not going to see this on the model, but let's take a look at the back of the envelope here. The suggested fabrics for this is chalice, grit, crepe, dotted Swiss, velvet, all sorts of fabric, lightweight interfacing. The notions include seam binding or stretched lace, which is optional. You have zipper, hook and eyes, bias tape, elastic. This pattern goes up to a size 22 and there is no finished garment measurements here. I, I think it's kind of interesting that they say view C is dance pants. Okay, so are they underwear or dance pants? Or maybe they're talking about tap shorts. Maybe that's it. I think of tap shorts as being more 1940s, 1950s, and not really the 70s, but they call it dance pants. I don't know. I'm not even quite sure what dance pants, what that's supposed to mean here, but it's included. One thing I also want to call out is they mentioned that they added additional size ranges, but keep in mind this only goes up to a size 22 with, with a bust measurement of 44 inches, waist 37 inches, and hips 46 inches. So if this has additional sizes, this pattern must have been in a very limited size range to start with because even with the additional sizes, I still feel like this pattern is coming up short. Okay, the next pattern is M8464, which is a Mrs. and Miss Petite lined jacket and dress by Laura Ashley. So this is a vintage 1980s jacket and dress by Laura Ashley. A uh, princess seam jacket with stand collar, has welt pockets, long sleeves with gather caps and cuffs. The dress has a sweetheart neckline and a lapped back bodice shoulder straps, side zipper, full gathered skirt, patch pockets, and this is an authentic vintage reproduction and it includes additional sizes and cutting layouts. So wow, this line art is super blurry. I don't know why, like I understand that it's an authentic vintage reproduction, but it's okay, it's okay to spice up and fix up the line art so that we, we don't have to look at like blurry stuff but here's the back of the jacket which does have princess seams on it you can get a little bit of the stand collar gathered puff sleeves cuffs you can't see the front of the neck uh, of the dress but at least on the back you do see the lapped back bodice the shoulder straps there is a side zipper and a full-on gathered skirt so Thankfully, this has been made for a model so that we can really see what's going on here. Can we get a closer look at this model here? Okay, yes, we can. So this is a stand collar here. Princess seams, but you don't really see the princess seams in the front. Puff sleeves. You can see a little bit of the dress, but not much. So let's see if we can find a photo without the jacket on. 
So you see the straps, beautiful sweetheart neckline, princess seams, gather skirt, and front pockets. Uh, this looks to be a very lovely dress, but it's also a dress that if you've seen one, you have seen at least 10 others that look like this. Uh, this is the back with the jacket. I really don't think this jacket is doing much for this dress, but again, this is a 1980s vintage reproduction, so it makes sense why the sleeves look the way they do, but I feel like this is a, a very dated look to a jacket. In terms of the, uh, oh yeah, I just realized we didn't actually see the back of the dress without the jacket. All of the photos show it with the jacket on so you don't really get to see the lapped bodice in the back. So the suggested fabric for this is baby cord, chambray, cotton blends, broadcloth, linen, sear sucker. There is a lining interfacing as well. For the jacket there is two buttons and for the dress there is a zipper and a hook and eye as well as seam binding. This goes up to a size 26 and if you have a 48 inch bust the finished garment measurement is 51 and a half inches so that's three and a half inches and then the waist for a size 26 41 inches and the finished waist measurement is nine and a half inches. So this is going to be quite fitted in the bust area and it's gonna be a bit loose in the waist. The next pattern is M8458. This is a Mrs. and Men's wide leg cargo pants and shorts that have elastic and drawstring waist and pocket variations. View B has an elastic cord at the hem. So again, we're getting cargo style pants. Like we saw the cargo skirt, which is very early 2000s. We saw the cargo-esque knit culottes with the pockets on the front. And now we have these cargo pants and shorts. So the shorts have the two pockets in the front. There's the side front pockets, as well as the pockets on the front of the thigh. And then there's back pockets. The pants have even more pockets than the four that the shorts have. It looks like it has six, seven, eight, nine, nine pockets on the front uh, and two in the back with the drawstring cord hem. And then this is just the pants without the pockets in them or on them. So let's take a closer look at this pattern here. This is what it looks like, the drawstring, the front cargo pockets, and then the additional pockets and side pockets with the zipper you can see here. And this is the version with the drawstring hem. So this is view B. Uh, same view, but just a closer look at those pockets. This highlights why these pockets are not necessarily a good idea on the front of the thigh. You can see the pockets, how it splays out here as this person bends their knee. The same thing is happening on the uh, pants on the other person. You can see the pockets is just splaying outward. So these are the shorts, which is illustrations the pants without the pockets. And here's what the back is. I think the version here is lying more flat than this one, but there's something kind of wonky going on with these pockets that's preventing them from sitting the way you would expect them to sit. But the back is just what it is. Like this is just screaming to me like early 2000s. The suggested fabric here is cotton blend, lightweight nylon, ripstop, twill with some interfacing. Notions include elastic, some grommets, drawstring cord, cord stoppers, zippers, just the whole nine. This pattern goes up to a size 50 to 52 size range. So if you have a hip size of 51 to 53 inches, the finish hip measurement is going to be 58 inches. So that is seven inches. Uh, this pattern is supposed to be unisex. So it is covering a lot of ground. 
coupled with the design is meant to be kind of a loose baggy fit. I feel that cargo pants is like a hard style to really pull off, even more so the baggier the cargo pants are. The next pattern is M8468, which is a Mrs. Scrub, which includes a zip front jacket and a vest, which have front princess seams and exterior and interior pockets. Exterior side pockets have an visible zipper and there is a zipper guard to help prevent clothes getting caught in the zipper and it laps over the zipper pull at the top. And there is a slim leg pants that have an elastic waist, patch pockets, and ankle slit. So here is the zipper here on the front, but the exterior zipper here is kind of hidden because of the flap and to protect your clothing. There is princess seams here. Nice. That was sleeveless. So this was the vast view. B is the jacket and it shows the interior of the pockets and what you have going on as well as a very slim fit pants with some pockets on the side. Let's see if we can get a closer look here. Oh, this is nice. I like this. I like the details of the exterior zipper here, the interior zipper, the princess seams, the pants. This looks to be like a modern take on scrubs and the side slit of these pants. Yeah, this is like a modern take on scrubs. This is, looks really nice. This looks really comfortable. It looks like it's made out of knits. This is the back view. Not, it's not going to be too exciting. This is kind of expected. You see the princess seam there. Pockets that are visible from the front. Side slits complete with your medical Crocs. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Those Crocs sandals, they are so comfortable. Okay, so this is going to be made out of a stable knit such as fleece, French terry fleece, ponte sweatshirt fleece. There's interfacing. There is a separating zipper as well as invisible zipper as notions. And you also have bias tape and elastic for notions as well. This goes up to a size XXL, which is 24 to 26 size. If you have a bust measurement of 46 to 48, the finished garment measurement and the bust is going to be 53 and a half inches. That's seven and a half inches if you have a 46 inch bust. For the waist, 39 to 41 and a half inches. The finished waist measurement is 52 and a half inches. So if you have a 39 inch waist, so that's gonna be like what, 13 and a half inches or so in the waist. So these are going to be loose given the, the ease and the model photo shows the scrubs being more fitted. So I'm a little bit taken back by how much ease is in the waist. But I guess if you account for the amount of pockets going on and the material for those pockets, I suppose, but it still feels a little bit misleading because this shows something that's a lot more fitted than what the size chart indicates. The next pattern is M8466, which is a Mrs. Slip Dress and Sheer Overdress. So this is a vintage 1960s slip dress and sheer overdress. Two section dart fitted slip dress. Wait, what? Two section dart fitted slip dress and sheer overdress. I'm not even quite sure what two section dart fitted means. Oh, I wonder if they're referring to these two lines here by two section dart fitted slip dress. Hmm, I'm just, I'm not quite sure what they mean by that. There is a sudden sleeves, bell sleeves, dress has a side zipper and shoulder straps. Overdress has a center back zipper, bound neckline with self fabric. Sleeves may be bound by bias self fabric or lace. This is such a wordy description for something that doesn't all need to be spelled out right here. But okay, this is an authentic reproduction and it includes additional sizes and cutting layouts. Looking at the line drawing, I'm not quite sure if these are darts or gathers here in the shoulder. I'm still kind of hung up on the mention of the two section dart fitted. I kind of wonder if it's referring to these two lines 
here and here on the bust. I'm not quite sure, but there is a set in sleeve. These are bell sleeves, and I'm not quite sure if these are just pleats or bands that appear on the sleeve and the bottom of the dress. Let's actually take a closer look at this. This looks to be a slip and then what you would wear over this slip. It could be opaque or it could be sheer, depending on your fabric choice. This is the sheer version and this is the slip. You don't really see the two section darts. I'm not quite sure if I'm supposed to see that on the illustration because I don't. But the back of the envelope suggested fabric is crepe, jersey, linen, silks, cotton, synthetic, wool crepe. For the slip dress, for the overdress is like chiffon, organdy, organza, synthetic shears, and view D for the overdress, you can actually make it out of lace. The notions, there are zippers, seam bindings, hook and eyes, ribbon. Oh, that's what I was seeing. What I was thinking was a band or pleat, that's actually a ribbon. On view C, this is the lace over the bell sleeves and then dress. This goes up to a size 26 and there is no finished garment measurements here. The next pattern is M8463, which is a Mrs. Blouse vest, skirt, and petticoat by Laura Ashley. So this is a vintage, authentic vintage reproduction from the 1980s by Laura Ashley that includes a pullover blouse that has a tucked front, button front opening, collar, ruffles, sleeves with gathered cap, long sleeves that are also gathered into a button cuff, short sleeves that have tucks and ruffle, unlined button vest that has patch pockets, tie belt, and some top trim. There is a tiered skirt that has tucks, hemline ruffles, and elastic in the waist. And then there's a petticoat that has ruffle with lace or eyelet trim and elastic waist. You get all the ruffles, you get all the gathers, you get all of the puffs and the cuffs that you can ever dream of when you get a Laura Ashley pattern. So we only have the back here to look at, but this is the vest. This is the blouse with long sleeves. You can see the gathers, you can see the cuffs, you can see the ruffles and the collar. And ditto to that, to the one that's short sleeves. However, it looks to have some additional trim on the sleeve itself. This is what the tiered skirt looks like with the ruffle at the hem. And then this is the petticoat with the ruffle at the bottom and lace trim. So this is pretty exciting because we do get models. You know what this outfit reminds me of? Has anyone seen the TV show called Big Love? Big Love came out in the early 2000s and it was centered on a Mormon fundamentalist group and their lives together. Yeah, it's giving me like the character played by Chloe Sevigny. She dressed in this way and she was like a devout fundamentalist on the TV show. And that's what it's giving me. But anyways, you do see the vest here. It does have its patch pockets. It has some buttons. You get this blouse here with the ruffles on the collar, the ruffles at the sleeves. You have the tucks on the skirt, as well as this being a tiered skirt. And then you get the ruffle at the bottom. You see a little bit of the petticoat, but I'm not completely sold on what's happening here on the hem. This like jagged edge hem going on. Uh, more illustrations that I'm going to cruise on by. So this is the top, the jacket, or the vest rather, and what the petticoat looks like. I, I like the way this outfit looks because you take a little bit of that ruffles, but you pair it with something like jeans, and it helps soften all of the puffs and the cuffs and the ruffles and the tucks that are going on. This is the top with the petticoat. And like I said, the petticoat looked like it could be its own standalone skirt. And this just further proves it. And you can really see the details in the blouse here as well. This is the back with the vest. Ruffles get carried over to the back of the collar. The vest has the tie in the back. And this is what the tiered skirt looks like. 
And this is the back of the blouse without the vest and what the petticoat looks like. Oh, we're getting spoiled right now. Look at how many model photos is included for this Laura Ashley pattern. Where all the other patterns, we got maybe one or two model photos at most. And this pattern has like several. I feel like Simplicity is trying to really sell this. And I'm not going to lie, they're doing a good job. Um, I think this pattern has a lot of unique details where you can go full fantasy or if you're not really feeling the full fantasy you can remove some of these details and still end up with a nice blouse a skirt or a vest suggested fabric for this is broadcloth hmm not quite sure I, I i agree with corduroy perhaps for the vest cotton blend linen ticking fabric interfacing and notions include buttons and the skirt includes elastic this goes up to a size 16. Huh? This goes up to a size 16. I thought the pattern mentions. Oh, nope. Okay. I was about to say I thought this pattern mentioned additional sizes included, but it looks like for this vintage reproduction, no additional sizes were added. So the largest size for this is going to be a size 16 it looks like. So if you are a size 16 with a bust of 38 inches, the finish bust measurement is 47 and a half inches. So that's nine and a half inches in the bust. So all you get is like the bust measurements. Nine and a half inches seems to be a lot, but there was also a lot going on with the blouse. So it may be accounting for that. The next pattern is M8454, which is a Mrs. Romper. This is a wrap front romper with sleeve, collar, and pocket variations. It has shorts, a hidden front zipper, and options for three skirt styles that wrap in the front. Cute romper looks to have uh, some bust darts, waist darts, a wrap skirt, some cargo inspired pockets here. This is the back with the waist darts, a different type of collar style with a notch collar, front pockets and a different type of skirt and then we have a different color style with a different sleeve style here and more of a fitted skirt shorts look so this is actually looking kind of cute let's see if we can get a closer look at this model photo so this looks to be view c with the collar but it looks beautiful. I can see a zipper here and I'm not quite sure why I can see the zipper pull tab here. But this is the skirt. Nice sleeves. Some nice hardware here. Okay, this is like a very similar view. Although these sleeves are looking kind of long. If I were to make this, I would want to pay some close attention to what's going on with the sleeve as well as the casing around the wrist because it just doesn't... This side looks a little bit better than this side. I'm not quite sure what's going on with this side. But overall, still, it's actually a pretty good fabric choice too. This is the back. This looks to be kind of tight. <laughs> you can see like some of the drag line and such. But that's something that can be fixed. There's some weird stuff going on with this waist dart in the back. Was that going on in the front? No. The waist darts look okay in the front. Still not quite sure why I see that zipper tab where I see it. All right, suggested fabric is cotton blends, crepe, stretch wovens. There's some interfacing. Notions include zipper, two D-rings, one swivel hook clasp, and some elastic. This goes up to a size 22. And if you're a size 22 with a body measurement of 44 inches in the bust, the finished garment measurement is 47 and a half inches. So that's three and a half inches. The waist if you have a 37 inch waist, the finished waist measurement is one and a half inches. Okay, this is gonna be fitted here. And then the hip measurement, if you have 46 inches, the finished garment measurement is three and a half inches. So this is gonna be a fitted romper. 
I'm actually a little bit speechless seeing this pattern because I'm just like, this looks promising. The only thing that's missing is it being in a women's size that goes up to a size 38. The next pattern is M8453, which is a Mrs. Skirt and two lengths. So we have skirts that has two lengths, that has a yoke on the bias and some seaming details, baby hem, invisible zipper closure, and some optional color blocking. View B has elastic button looping closure and train. So you can see both on the front and the back for both views, it has this interesting yoke detail with some seaming on view B here on the skirt. You do see the elastic button loops here on the side and then the back of view B has a train and this is just showing the color blocking opportunities with view B or even view A because view A is just this yoke and this bottom portion here. This does have like a very vintage feel to it. So this is the buttons down the side here. Um, I really do like this yoke detail and you can also see the seaming detail. And this is the one with the train on it. So you get the uh, full fantasy here of what it would look like. This is view A as an illustration. And this is view B without the train, uh, the back view. I mean, this looks beautiful. And this is the type of skirt that you can go everyday wear or full on bridal, but it doesn't have to be bridal if you don't want it to be bridal. Again, I'm distracted by this top. This top is like distressing me, you know? <laughs> Let's see what's going on in the back of this pattern. So suggested fabric is chalice, charmeuse, crepe de chine, crepe interfacing. Notions include invisible zipper, as well as the elastic bridle looping trim and shank buttons. This goes up to a size 26 and it only gives you the waist measurement. So if you have a 41 inch waist, the finished waist measurement is going to be 42. It's just one inch of ease in the waist for the skirt. So this is going to be a fitted skirt in the waist at the very least. It's just the, it's, again, it's just like a shame that this couldn't go up just a little bit larger. The next pattern is M8451, which is a vest style button front top with sleeve and length variations. View B has a notch collar and view B and C has a tie back. And there is a separate pattern piece for A, B, C, D cup sizes. So... This is the vest inspired top. It has a waistline darts in the front and the back, notch collar tie in the back. And this is view C. It looks to have like a gathered, it looks to have like a gathered puff sleeves here. But let's take a closer look at the pattern itself. So notch collar, the collar looks beautiful. I actually like this type of collar a vest inspired shape to it. You do get the waistline darts and some of the vest type details here. This is just showing the front again. Let's see if we can get the back. Yeah. So this is the back of the collar and the vest detail in the back. It's a cute top. I'll give it that. That's a cute top but we don't get to see what view C or view A looks like. So that's a little disappointing. Suggestive fabrics is chalice, cotton blend, linen. Interfacing notions includes buttons. This goes up to a size 26. If you have a 48 inch bust, so if you are a D bust cup, that would be 52 and a half inches. So that's four and a half inches of ease in the bust if you're a D cup. And then for the waist for size 26, it's 41 inches. And the finished waist measurement for the D cup is 45 inches. So that's four inches. 
This is going to be a fitted top, which is perfectly fine. And it looks actually quite cute. The next pattern is M8450, which is a Mrs. and Women's dress, jumpsuit, and overskirt. So this is a special occasion dress or jumpsuit. And it comes with a detachable overskirt that has an optional train. There are separate patterns for cup sizes A, B, C, D for misses, and C, D, and double D for women's size range. This is view A is the dress, view B is the jumpsuit, and view C and D are the overskirt with D having a little bit of a train to it. So let's actually take a closer look at this. Okay, let's see what we can see. This looks like the dress is being held up by ribbons. <laughs> Why do these straps look so insubstantial? Like they just look like they're barely holding the top up. Uh, but this is the dress in Barbie pink and the overskirt here. I can't quite say I fully am on board with the way this overskirt was executed. Uh, I do think the way this jumpsuit looks pretty cute in the illustration, but do we get a model photo? Oh, no. We get another model photo in the dress. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these straps are just made out of ribbon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is the dress. Just another view of the dress. And this is the back of the dress and the overskirt with the pleats in the back. But let's take a look at the back of the envelope. The suggested fabric for this is novelty fabric, satin, taffeta. Contrasting fabric for view A could be lace or sequin. There is a lining as well as interfacing. This goes up to a size 28W. However, finished garment measurements are not available. The next pattern is M8448, which is a Mrs. Knit Dress with sleeve variations. So this is a knit dress with diagonal seaming that allows for some color blocking to happen. And the dress seems to have an asymmetric hemline as well as bell sleeves, sleeveless options. And this is just showing off different ways that you can color block with stripes. Okay, so it's a knit dress with bell sleeves, asymmetric color blocking lines, and asymmetric hem. This is the back view, which is very similar to the front. That's it. That's all we get. So suggested fabric is stretch knits and this goes up to a size 26. If you're a size 26 with a body measurement of 48 inch bust, the finished bust measurement is 49 and a half inches. So that's one and a half inches of ease. The waist if you have 41 inches, the finished garment measurement is 45, so that's four inches. And the hips, if you have 50 inches, the finished garment measurement is 56 inches, so that's six inches. I noticed that with the other knit patterns in this release, they all seem to have positive ease. The next pattern is M8447, which is a Mrs. Knit Top and Pants by Brandy Joan. So this is an oversized sweats by Brandy Joan, which is a knit top that has a drop shoulder, long sleeves with top stitching and bands at the sleeve and hem. There are pull on drawstring pants that have side pockets and pin tuck center front. So drop shoulder bands at the sleeve and the hem. There's a top stitching detail. Even at the neckline, there's a top stitching detail. The pants, side front pockets with a pin tuck in the front. So let's actually take a closer look at this. Um, there's something wonky going on with this neckline. There is a top stitching detail here, but that also looks wonky. I'm not quite sure if there's shoulder pads in this top or not, but yeah, it's an oversized top with pants that have the pin tuck design to them and they look to be pretty tapered. Let's see what the back looks like. 
This, weird, this neckline is standing away from the body and it's wavy. But aside from that, I don't think there is shoulder pads now that I see the back. I think it's just this person just posing and perhaps hiking up their shoulder and I mistook it as a shoulder pad. I don't think there is a shoulder pad there. But yeah, oversized shirt and pants. I mean, this is just loungewear. I'll give it to Brandy Jones. She's giving vibes here and really selling it. But this is essentially pajamas. So the suggested fabric is stretch knits, cotton knits, French terry, ponte knit. Notions include elastic and drawstring cord and grommets. This goes up to a XL, which is a size 20 to 22. In that range, the bust body measurement is 42 to 44 inches. And the finished garment measurement is 48 and a half inches. That is going to be six and a half inches of ease. Okay. I mean, this is an oversized top. So six and a half inches is not too crazy. The waist for a size 20 to 22 is 34 to 37 inches. And the finished garment measurement is 39 and a half inches. That's going to be five and a half inches of ease in the waist. As for the hips, 44 to 46 inches and the finished hip measurement is 48 and a half inches. That's going to be four and a half inches in the hips. I feel like the ease here is pretty reasonable given what this pattern is. The last pattern here is M8446, which is a Mrs. Dress by Brandy Jones. So this is a bias cut special occasion dress that has side ruching, a cowl neckline, and a high slit. So you do see a little bit of the cowl neckline, the ruching, the slit that feeds into this side seam. And in the back, there is a slit and a two piece back. So this is a bias cut dress, cowl neckline. Although this is my personal preference, but I would have wanted a cowl that's a little bit more drapier than this. This is standing up a little too much for my personal taste. Yeah, this could have been sewn a little bit better in terms of the armhole, but I'll give that a pass because this is satin. This looks to be a satin fabric and satin fabric can be an absolute nightmare to sew with if you don't know what you're doing. But this is definitely a high front slit like they weren't kidding and it feeds into this side seam here and it looks like this is the back although the back is looking kind of wonky here in terms of how it's sewn but again this looks to be a satin fabric all right so let's take a look at the suggested fabrics chalice charmeuse crepe stable knits there is some interfacing and the notions include an invisible zipper and button this goes up to a size 22 uh, size 22 body measurement for the bust is 44 inches and the finished garment measurement is 47 and a half inches so that's three and a half inches in the bust the waist for a size 22 body measurement is 37 inches and the finished garment measurement is 42 so that's five inches and then the hip here is 46 inches and the finished hip measurement is 48 and a half inches so that's two and a half inches I guess like what strikes me as a little bit strange is the waist measurement because it has five inches of ease in the waist. I don't know if they're accounting for the ruching or what. Just noting that there's a little bit more than what I expected there to be, especially given that the bust and the hip seems to be a little bit more fitted. Okay, so this was the last pattern to discuss in the release. Overall, I feel like this release is underwhelming. There wasn't really any particular pattern that I felt was a wow or a standout pattern. It just was just like an okay release. I noticed that McCall did a pretty 
decent job with their fabric selection and really making the patterns that they have here look modern. However, I noticed that there has been a decline in the, the amount of model photos that we got. For the Laura Ashley patterns, we seem to have gotten a lot more photos on the model, whereas other patterns, you only got one or two model photos at most. I'm not quite sure why that is, particularly when several of these patterns come in different views that are different enough to warrant seeing it on a model to really understand whether this pattern is worth purchasing. If you don't already have something like these patterns in your stash, there may be some worth buying. But overall, I'm just like, hmm, I feel like I'm going to sit this offering from McCall out. Just nothing really strikes me as like, a, ooh, got to get that. But let me know what you think of McCall's early spring release down in the comments below. Let me know which pattern was your favorite, which was something that looked more problematic than what I called out. Uh, let's just get to talking in the comment section about this release. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.